Hi, in today's lesson, we're going to have unit 3. And it's uh, the, safe, the third unit, actually, of Autodesk Revit Architecture Elementary course. Uh, in the first lecture of unit 3, we're going to study uh, the modeling. It's actually the entire unit 3 is a modeling. And in our first lecture, specifically, we're going to study the, the main concept of modeling with its two types. And we're going to focus uh, mainly on the non-material based modeling and that's the basic contents we're going to have so we're going to uh, focus on the modeling types in Autodesk Revit architecture specifically in the project environment whether it's non-material based or it's material based so that's what we uh, we're going to have and then we're going to go through a couple of basics of uh, the following like levels grid basic annotation basic generic wall creation and modification Hoovering and chain selection, generic doors and windows, loading families, columns, generic floors, making parapets, flexing the building, and modification tools, underlay and making a single story for a small building. And uh, that's the building, that's very basic building we're gonna do here. It's a very generic, it doesn't have any specific material, except of course for the column here. Uh, and uh, it's a very basic building as you can see it's one story based on uh, seven by seven grid and uh, let's go and do that so I'm gonna close that uh, file that I have previously made and as we, we did in the previous lesson we just go here new and Revit application menu and the new and then project and from the new project dialog box I'm gonna hit on uh, browse make sure you are in US metric and then go to default metric and then make sure you are on project again and hit OK Tim but again it's a good idea if you go to manage and from manage go to project units and put your eyes here on in front of the length it's millimeter that's what I want it's a good idea to lose a couple of seconds to double check the units anyway so that's uh, that the whole idea today is about modeling and in order to understand modeling it's really a good uh, it's a good way of or a good way to start with is to go with uh, any type of architectural elements categories specifically walls and notice that they are either a generic uh, material or a generic elements that when you create them they don't actually have any type of material within so if you go to edit type and then structure you're gonna find that the structure here it's by category it doesn't have any specific material and we call this uh, a non-material base some of our some of the books you can might find it's called generic uh, non-material base actually is more specific because you're gonna find some generic categorized with actually a material in it in any way so let's keep it that way. It's just a non-material element. So you're gonna find that a wall slabs having the same category. So if you're gonna, you're gonna have a floor or a slab here, you're gonna say the same thing. It doesn't have to go to edit type. It doesn't have a specific material inside. And thus, of course, no physical properties like thermal mass or resistance or anything else similar. But in the other hand, on, on the other hand, you can go and um, and look at what the second type of of architectural elements like like this like so it's like a really fully detailed exterior render on a brick on block so if you create this guy here as a wall and I can just increase the detail level of what I'm seeing here in section you can see this poor guy doesn't have anything inside which is as we sell it's a non-material uh, architectural elements or in this case a non-material wall well, this is a material-based wall, and you can see it's stacked with a lots of vertical layers of materials. And if you go edit here, and then to go in the front of the structure again, edit, you're gonna find lots, lots of specific material with a th specific thickness, and even you can find a specific physical representation of an actual thickness by the material that we have here. That's the accumulation of it. As you found, you're gonna find actual resistance and thermal mass for that. Anywho, without getting too detailed, and generally we're going to focus on this type in this lecture, as it's more basic lecture, it's just that unit 3 we saw in the beginning, so I just wanted to introduce, to introduce you sorry, to this topic, 
So now back to the reality here. Let's go back to this uh, example we have. So what's happening? Anyway, that's my lovely Casper Sky warning me for nothing. Anyway, come here to the grid and just click. That's our first datum actually. You're gonna find it in architecture. Datum here or datum here, go to grid. I love to start with that. Of course, in case that we have a grid actually. I'm gonna show you a different example where there's no grid actually has been proposed here. Anyway, I'm gonna accept the default uh, grid bubble size. Just make sure to click approximately within this. Don't go bigger as much as you can. And if you can, it's not a big deal. You can just move that tags. But if you can, as special, specifically in the beginning, don't go start up here. Just go inside those four, four elevation or four tags for the elevation. So if you can I click here, let's say, and then you want to, of course, make it vertical. So just put your hand as vertical as you can. And when you see this dashed blue line and the, this tag telling you it's vertical, it's, it's, good, it's good time to just click. And now by this dashed blue line, double checking this or making sure that it's actually a 90 degree down. Also the indication that you can see that 90 degree angle is can give you a better help or a better indication that you are correctly aligning your first grid. While you're still on, the command still on. It's okay if you click this small checkbox to create uh, two sided bubbles as you can see. Now let's assume that I don't know how much is the actual diff distance between one and two. So just gonna go here roughly and don't click like randomly and try to just go as as much as you could and uh, to be starting with the same level that the or the same same area that we already start up number one. So see like for example here. Uh, it's actually giving me the distance, but I'm gonna ignore it now and just my eyes just to drag your attention to this horizontal dashed line Telling me that you are going to start or I'm going to start number two Specifically from this same place where I started number one So this is a good a good way of snapping. It's like a, a relative provided for you Easily so when you click now you're gonna start from the same place where one started and again, the vertical thing, as you can see in the 90 degree, the blue dashed vertical line. Keep moving slowly until you see both vertical and horizontal, as you can see. So now I am vertical, that's number one. And the second thing that I'm also ending wherever two ended, click. And again, as I said, forget the distance, just click here. Now, again, the command still on. So let me stop here. I'm gonna hit double time space and see now we have this one and it's again number two and here this one number one and look the lovely and smart software it's actually recognizing that two come after one as as, as really a good way of uh, uh, numbering the whole thing so if we're going to go back again to grid same procedure quickly without without paying attention to how much exactly it is i can just move from the beginning to the end and line the whole thing together and what if I wanted, what if I wanted something exact? So another step, I'm gonna start when I see the dashed line and see this this guy here, the nine nine thousand seven hundred. I can just move my hand a little bit to the left, keeping the vertical, sorry, the horizontal dashed line until I see, for example, seven thousand, like this. And then I click, and then I push it down with the vertical thing. And when they both appear, I can click. So now I get myself a nice number four axis which is actually exactly located away from three as a seven thousand so that's nice if we can keep accumulating the information we need anyway so now let's assume that those four are actually seven thousand millimeter away from each other as i know that the last one to the third one was actually correct so i'm not going to pay attention to this i'm not going to move that and I'm not going to move that again. So if I want to move this guy and make him go that way, uh, a specific amount, or actually I can, I, I notice that when I click him, like a, a temporary dimension just appears. So if you hit double click to escape to deselect, or click anyway outside, whenever this guy is deselected, number two, you're going to notice that the temporal dimension, or the dimension, the bluish one, 
are actually disappearing. And those are temporal dimension and they appear when you select any object trying to link it to the closest object to it. So that's a good idea. You can hit this dude here, the small thing, the small icon to make it permanent. Or you can just keep them and use them like clicking here and make this 7000. And voila, you're going to see this jump go toward number three to make the distance again seven. So if I select this guy again, you're going to see the temporal dimension telling me the distance from here to here is seven and the distance from here to here is seven, which is perfectly good. Now, the big misconception in Rivet that now when I wanted to move number two, all right, I see this is seven correct and then I see this is not correct. So I jumped here to make the wrong conclusion by making this 7000 and when I hit enter I think my I feel like I did a little a serious mistake which is that it, it shouldn't it shouldn't go I was probably you're gonna think that one was gonna jump back to two and make everything happy so let's go back with undo here and let's keep in our mind that the golden rule number one in Revit is when you want to move something if you want to move something you must select it first so I wanted this to move that way so why I click this that's a really always happen mistake so select this guy you want to move and now change change this number say 7000 and it's gonna work so always select things that you want to move so if I want to make this 5 that way distance just select this guy and make this 5 alright that's a really important thing to consider now let's continue this job now they are actually all of them as you can see all of them with a seven as as you notice but it's really good idea when you work in this type of field it don't depend on your good memory because it's al always going to betray you so select this middle guy and turn those te temporary dimension into a permanent dimension pushing that up like this it's never going to hurt you if you do this so just select click that and then push that to align it like that and now we're changing the temporary dimension into a permanent dimension it's very good to double check those number against the document you have the hard copies and before you go and use those guys as uh, guidelines to draw uh, any other further uh, walls or any architectural elements that depend on that anyway let's go grid here and let's click anywhere to create the horizontal thing and again now to the horizontal dash and then click click this guy again so now we see it's obviously Revit is architectural soft, a smart architectural software but again it have this on down downside doesn't recognize you want to make a vertical one and you need a different way of numbering them uh, or titling them so you're gonna click that and make it a now if you notice that they are too close just click the move command click anywhere you want here as a base point and move it down or up you can just move uh, that's the base point move with a specific value depending on a 300 you see here remember or just like 200 and the way you want so just move your hand down and just write 200 to push it in a specific number as you as you desire now the same thing can be done but just select that guy first and make a copy and in the copy just keep the constant train to make it vertical and keep the multiple to make more than one so I'll just push my hand down as I said and I'm gonna hit 7000 mil and then I'm gonna push it down and make another 7000 mil and another one here we go so now we make them the, the whole of them as like a 7 by 7 by 7 which is good now I note that for example those sides are actually shorter than those so just click the A zoom in again don't depend on the sniper method and just select this guy click and drag and move that down like this see which is lovely you can see that b and c and the entire universe is actually dragging with you and because all of those locked and uh, all of them actually locked to the same place so it's good anyway uh now again i'm gonna select this guy turn on the temporary dimension into a pyramid one and then push that a little bit to the left and then select this guy and do the same thing now again probably a click here probably a little bit down see the entire vertical grid actually moving with it lovely that's the lock that's the love power of lock here 
now what if I needed to add another one here but this guy again is very close so I'm gonna zoom in let's say uh, I don't know let's say 1200 like this and then that way and see that probably those are overlapping with each other and you don't want that it's okay while we're still on by the way just click on this add elbow thing and I'm gonna break it for you and I'm gonna deselect select this guy just check the bubble and then hit the elbow thing and now lovely you see this again same same here now it's working perfectly so when you, whenever you want to cancel this elbow just drag that light way see and it's gonna be cancelled I'm gonna hit undo control Z too because I want to keep it just to show you that how to break that and how to do or how actually to deal a little bit with more light grid and modification so now as we finish this grid uh, it's just a basic 7x7 seven seven except this guy so it's a good idea to work and to do a double check actually what uh, we have here in elevation or what's actually our levels as I see level 1 and level 2 which are technically what doesn't make me happy so I want to change that I think it's an American system first again get rid of the ceiling thing it always bring you problems close it go to east as an elevation you got click this guy here and just drag it that way and by dragging it just to make it overlap correctly with the whole things are here same thing here just push them up and that's it you can just even click those make it like bigger here or taller it's good to make really nice uh, and like adjustment for those to get the, the best of out of those anyway come here and see that's level one and level two and probably it's an American system I don't like that so probably your company want that to be a G plus system so I'm gonna say here ground flow and I just click once and then I click twice on the name and it's allowing me to change and when you finish just hit enter rivet will gonna give you a lovely warning message telling you that you would like to rename the corresponding views so by that now I'm changing level one so here level one and don't forget I have another level one here in the ceiling plan and it's telling you when you're going to change this do you want those with to be changed with them of course say yes and see now level one here change into ground floor same this poor guy also has been changed even if you, don't, if you don't see him same thing here click and then click again another click let's make this first floor and when you hit enter same warning message and say yes and again here and here and guess what also here so that's what I want so if you want to make this higher for example maybe like uh, 5,000 just to click and just hit F sorry 5 and voila you can see that the level is actually getting higher which is really great so now again jump back to the ground floor and all that navigation within the project browser as you can see and now I'm gonna go to uh, a wall so uh, it's asking us to save must save actually but I'm gonna ignore it and uh, that's what again so we did did a little bit of levels and grids and we deal with a little bit of a basic annotation now let's do some let's do some uh, generic uh, wall or non non materialized based wall and try to do a little of uh, a modification to it let's do that so again I'm gonna go architecture and from the architecture here that's the walls again I'm gonna pick a generic 200 mil wall notice that as an architectural element the wall needs a base constant train which is the lower point of it actually gonna be connected to and the top constant train and the top constant train here is actually saying it's unconnected so it's just giving you the unconnected amount of height or extrude which is like an 8000 so it doesn't have anything top to be linked to it just the lower part which is the minimum requirement that's the thing to put your eyes on so a wall must have a minimum at least the base to be constrained and it also allow you to make a top constrained 
but in this case it isn't. It's just unconnected and you can change it here whenever you want. That's first you have a look at. The second is the location line. So it's saying that's the wall center. So when I zoom in here to select this intersection, you see the snapping here into the intersection between those two, one and uh, one and eight. So if I click here with the intersection, see this center line of my wall, the 200 mil thick wall, exactly in its center with the center of the with the of the grids. That's what I want. So when I zoom out and then click here when I see the intersection, and then uh, click here, click here probably, and then here. Whenever you see the intersection, as you see, zoom. See what we do? Lovely so far. And that's what we want. So my my base point is actually I'm holding the wall in its middle against the grid. And again, when you zoom in, see the power and the lovely power of Revit when you connect those two things, and it's actually uh, making them correctly joined and trimmed and everything beautiful here. All right. So now let's see what I've done and. Uh, just click here the default 3d view and make a shaded here and those are generic walls so see no material no nothing it looks too high anyway don't trust your 3d just go to east elevation and now we're gonna see the problem that those walls are actually as we said 8,000 millimeter and the floor is actually 5,000 so they are unconnected that's the issue so the first mistake you ever gonna regret doing it in Revit is to come here and make this 5,000. I know your brain gonna tell you what the hell he's talking about. That he can make this 8,000 exactly 5,000. You don't need to to bother yourself and just link this. You know, that's a very common mistake. I've been seeing too many people working in Revit and they ignore this and that's very bad because why you use Revit go use 3D Studio Max the, the whole thing about the BIM thing is to make it smart and parametric so don't use ever uh, an unconnected unless you know really why you're doing that you're gonna lose the whole power of Revit I want this the first floor is the one who actually controlling everything the slab the wall the thing the parapet so don't give a fixed number what you need to do is to make this top wall actually like this connected the top of it connected to the first floor that's what i want and uh, that's the, the first way to do it and then you have to select the rest of them and i i, I hate that by the way so you should have you shouldn't do that you can go like this and all of them select once you know and you can go that first floor again it's a good way and the, the only disadvantage is is that uh, you know if you have too much partitions or doors in the middle you're going to select them so when you're going to select again you're going to go filter and then just check the wall and then do this stuff which is also correct or again just hover above the one of them and until you see what it's saying click once on the tab the whole chain will be hovered and then click again and I'm gonna check that to first, whatever suits you actually. I think this one is faster and hit apply. You see now if you go to the east elevation in the 3D they're just getting shorter, and now they are not five thousand. They are following the first floor, which is a five thousand. You have to understand this. Now the wall are a smart wall linked the bottom of it and the top of it to those two things. When you change those two things those series of wall or chain of wall will follow let's flex by the way we call that flexing or testing when you test an architectural element in rivet we call that flex so let's flex this or test it from 5000 to 4000 and see the happy life now the wall are all the walls actually following this so i'm going to repeat that to five and see how lovely and smart BIM now we're talking startup to understand the idea of a smart modeling now let's go that that's that's done as a job now again I'm gonna go to the ground floor and this time we're gonna do the same thing or actually we're gonna do a different thing a different generic or different non material uh, which is but this time different architecture which is a floor gonna get here and lots of tools and basically they are divided into two categories 
uh, now uh, either you go and draw your 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 profile or you're gonna pick up line or pick up pole so even pick or draw draw it's just creating a shape like a circle roof or a circle for a floor it doesn't connect or understand or recognize the existed physical other models that this slab might slab might needs to or this floor might need to still exist while with this it should create a link between those walls and the slab themselves anyway anywho so i'm gonna pick walls here i'm gonna zoom in and if i just hover above the wall i can do the same boring business we said just hover and then tab and then click see when i've done that let me do undo for a couple of seconds if i have a wall this a pick wall and then i zoom in and i was hovering above the inside of a wall and then i hit tab and i hit the click notice that the, the edge of the profile is to the inside and that's it, that's okay if you want that in my case i don't so i'm gonna hit Control z repeating this hover above the outside of the wall and then hit tab and hit click and see how lovely the power of smart modeling it's actually sense that you want to make the 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 profile to the outside of the wall and i want to do that i know some of you want, might want to conceal this lab within the thing but in this example i was doing that on purpose anyway so now you can see that the entire profile created for you and the, the you know by the way that's the rest of the things here are actually deactivated in, in, in case if you just hit the other tabs by mistake trying to draw a wall rivet will prevent you from doing that the reason the only thing greenish here and the only thing is like with a color trying to push your attention to that that you are should you should actually finish the, the creating floor bottom you are in a sketching mode so rivet turn off almost everything except this to allow you to finish the sketch process so if you are happy with this outlines make sure that it goes stick to the ground floor as you can see here it's going to be created on the ground floor be careful with this generic 150 let's go generic 300 so it's again non-materialized base just make sure that this is all loop as close so no open gaps or overlapping or anything just like that ground floor level where it's going to be created and hit tick here or finish and now if you go to 3d now we have the the floor actually created for us so if you go to east elevation always check in the plan and in the 3d and finally go check the the, the elevation see what's happened here that's the, that's the lovely thing see the walls actually created from the ground floor and then being extruded upward while the slab is actually also attached to the ground floor but their depth is actually going downward and you have to understand this in this case those two things wasn't actually uh, overlapping or occupying the same place so no problem so far don't be rushed for the problems you're gonna have lots so when you know when you go to the first floor so I'm now picked up the first floor to create the roof notice that so you can do that by the way to go to the ground floor here and create the same thing now i'm going to create the the slab above that which is technically here but i selected this just on purpose so now when you select this make sure but because you selected this it's gonna be here i know it could be happen by mistake but easily you can fix it by tell rivet i want it yes i know drawing it here but i want it to be in the first floor it's okay again pick walls and then again hover to the outside or zoom 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 hover on the wall but standing on the outside hit tab and then hit click the same thing as you can see but this time i'm gonna make it can't leave that so i'm gonna select all those and delete and we now move we now trim with uh, copy we talked about that now let's go trim this guy trim and extend and then just select this one and select this one and rivet will continue them as you can see to make a closed shape make sure it's not an open make sure there's no overlap again as i said and now just hit tick here or finish that's an important question rivet will pop up this telling you that would you like walls that goes up 
to this floor to be to a uh, floor level to attach to its bottom of course yes and now if I go to east let me go first to the 3d as I said and everything look cool see here and again in the east elevation now look that's an important see this lab again as we said it's attached to the level and it goes downward as depth and it's overlapping with this guy which is sitting here and it should touch that it is touching that but when the pop-up question came telling you do you want it to be attached to the to the bottom of the slab that's what happened it stopped doesn't touch this it's attached to this one and it's attached to the lower edge of this slab so the actual height of the wall is getting a reduction by the amount of a 300 mil which is the slab thickness now in order to understand how sweet rivet goes again come here and flex the level the level is actually the one who control both the slab location and the height of the walls based on their relationship so let's go to 3000 this time and see how lovely nothing you don't want to change things by hand and see everything has been changed the height of the slab been pushed down and accordingly the thickness sorry the height of the walls are dramatically or immediately or automatically actually updated itself to get this correct result so let's get this back to 5000 see how lovely now we start to have like a parametric model a smart building now that's what i want happy with that cool now let me go and again to the first floor and this time notice that note something that i am in the first floor i should see just the slab why i am seeing the double line for the wall if you again as we said that in the previous lecture if i don't have anything been selected so the property panel show me the properties of the view which is in my case this floor plan first floor if i zoom in here a little bit down if i scroll down sorry you're gonna see this underlay and it's a ground floor plan so you're gonna like make it a, a very transparent or 50 percent of the opacity bring that uh, lower level which is the ground floor plan here just to allow me to design accordingly so if you if you want to change something or add something or add an opening here that might help you of what happening inside if you want to do partitions if you want as a first floor based on that one you can know where actually they are and you can help you can use the help of that which is really good anyway i'm not going to use it so go on first so to go to the walls and i can just easily go draw the whole partition the same thickness but let us a little bit make it complicated for ourselves i'm gonna go for a generic wall i know but it's a material base anyway deliberately i'm gonna use it just for a 90 mil it's a less thickness than the 200 mil that i have just 90 i'm gonna zoom in and here now if i keep this wall center see it's sitting on the first floor and again it's unconnected but look at this wall center if i click here and i move my hand i'm gonna end up by having a distance between this guy and this lab and like this see this is my partition or my parapet and that's my the edge of the slab and i really don't want that it's really wrong see if i just zoom 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 i don't want that so all right so should this face be aligned with this one so how are we going to do that so let me get rid of this dude first and then i go to the wall and uh again that's the most of the people have mistakes with it so you don't need to follow anymore the grids so you have to follow the physical architectural elements which is the slab edge so the slab edge should be identified by here the finish phase exterior and now when i click here see that's better it sends it sends the edge of the slab that's what i want and here you have to be a little bit careful if you're going a counter clock or the other way so this guy is okay this way but if you move that way you see the world will be actually flying in the air so be careful of which way you're gonna draw things so i'm gonna zoom out and then zoom in click when you see the end point this time and again zoom out and then click out and then in and then click and so on 
my mouse make lots of noise so that's it technically again go to 3d I know it's a huge but see how accurate the whole thing going it's flush here there is no extra or protrusion or setback or anything now really scary and really ugly let's fix this and to fix this parapet there's lots of ways actually you can again go hover tab and click and just I don't bother let's make it unconnected and make this like a 1200 and hit enter and hit apply and job finish in the cases where a building like this is so small you don't need to freak out about it just needs just do that and that's it but in a bigger building with lots of parapet and lots of maybe first floors roof and overlap and when you want to amend that and you know it's going to be amended so it's really wrong to do it as a fix and you have to keep it's not wrong but it's time consuming and that end up to you to do it wrong and probably gonna fix one of the part of the parapet and forget the rest so it's really a good idea to do a level actually for the parapet so here we go let's do that let's do it wrong actually so I'm gonna do a level and you go here level and start up again wherever you see the dash line and go here and move that way into the vertical line and you click and notice that when you deselect and hit escape twice it's actually creating a level called level 3 it's I know it's not it should, so if you think it should be second level no but if you remember in the beginning this one was level 1 and this one was level 2 so it, it, it keeps thinking it's gonna be level 3 anyway but notice that it have a blue thing here it's a, a blue tag that means it's a go to condition so if I double click it's gonna take me to a level called level 3 ah oh, that's serious it's look like an internet link that's level 3 which is here so what rivet did i hate that that's always gonna have and always gonna be happening to you is that when you create a new level here it's gonna create a level and a floor plan like what happened with this guy and this guy and that's technically what you don't want you're not gonna walk you're not gonna walk on the parapets you're not gonna need this as a floor plan yes you need it as a level to distinguish the exact or to define the exact height of the top of the wall but you're not gonna need that as a floor plan so you can select those guy and delete them but anyway why don't you do it the correct way so I'm just gonna hit undo and then I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna go to copy and I'm gonna push my hand or select here as a base point anyway and let's push our hand up let's say 1400 see when you hit escape now I know you got the same name but look it's a black so when you copy an existing level it's gonna change it into a black one and it knows that you want a copy of a level related to this level and floor that's really smart and when you go your eyes goes to whatever views created nothing not in the floor plans not in the ceiling that's lovely I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna name it parapet and that's it lovely you can even break it like this in case they are overlapping or whatever now again when you click uh, or you sort of actually hover above that tab and then click you're gonna you have to make this a uh, connected to a parapet see the level here and hit apply and life is good see now when I want to flex it's very easy let's make this uh, three see they're gonna work and that's good when you have really big building too much parapet that's gonna make your life much more easier so that's enough about levels and grid uh, again hovering now let's uh, let's have some uh, let's have some doors and windows so again let me go to the ground floor and in here I'm gonna go to door and that's the basic that's the property of it I'm not gonna change it now in this lecture you can just go and change whatever provided for you again I'm not gonna change that in this lecture as I say so if you push your hand up lovely you see this again the temporary dimension see how powerful they are telling it's 200 millimeter away from the edge that's what I want except it should have a different swing 
just hit space see another space you can push your hand down a little bit space space or push your hand the mouse up 200 men now click you're gonna trim and then add the door lovely and powerful again that's why I love rivet again do all the trim and when you go to 3d it have different way of representing it different as we said from the plan let's repeat that on the other side probably like this 200 million then click lovely now what if I wanted a double door or a different door than that because when I clicked here you know it's just one door one family with a lot of possibilities okay now load family that's what you have to do it actually didn't load everything for you from the library you give this just a poor guy only one guy just go to load and then make sure you are new as metric so go to door as a category please please again please don't load uh, you, you go you actually in a door why you load a, a column or a furniture I, I always do this mistake lots of students do that mistake so you are in a door go in a door category of course based on a metric system just go doors again and again don't don't buy this thing don't just don't load things with a curtain wall otherwise you're gonna be having nothing so anything with a curtain just ignore it for now so let me go down probably here that's nice let's double click it gonna load it from the library to the file but we have lots of other options I'm gonna just select this guy and then hit OK and while I gonna load it here as a family you see with its possibilities or it's, uh, it's just one actually so I'm gonna put it here again when you you move your mouse you can make it just exactly in the middle of the space like this see 2000 2050 same same here happy life and gonna do the whole trim and again let's go to 3d and see what we're doing a little bit far away from here and everything is okay just getting cancel to get rid of that and we get okay and finish with doors so let's try our locks with windows so I'm gonna go window here and again notice the thing that we spoke about last time that you can make them a different height here and be aware of this anyway I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna, be, I'm not gonna repeat this so just I'm gonna add that the same default window I'm gonna have here whatever the dimension but again how lovely let's move your hand it's the temporary dimension giving you the distance from the closest one which is the door beautiful so I can make 500 500 see powerful and lovely and easy 500 500 and anyway so now if I go to 3d I'll notice that they are lower than the whole thing so I can just select them all like this sorry one by one my my actual uh, finger is pressing continuously on controls and I can just keep changing this it's okay or I just can go to the east elevation so I don't see it or go north I think it's south yeah so south look now I can move them now one by one right by the move command and then you know do this and when it see this anyway it's, it's kind of you know annoying see so I don't know how much and you know doesn't uh, it is actually sensing it okay good 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 no it's not good it's painful ah uh, it is uh, anyway I hate that so the right way and the fast way to do that is to select this guy go to this command which we call it align and then just hit multiple alignment and just hit this guy right so that's your reference and then you you just click to the edge that you want it to be aligned with the dash line and just you know how beautiful it is you know you can keep it locked so if that's been changed those gonna follow it. I'm not gonna do that anyway I just wanted to show just an excuse to show you how to deal with the line and to make those windows quickly aligned to a specific height of those doors now they look better for anyway anyway for any reason but be careful when you go to the ground floor probably not gonna see them you are not gonna see them and why because they're gonna be actually higher see they are existed but you don't see them and in order to see them you have to lower them I think to to how much to I think 1.1 if my movie is still alive so if I select those guys now the cell is 1600 yeah let's make them 11 anyway now I think you can see them 
or you can keep them as the height you want but you have to add a special uh, view a special uh, uh, region view area for it so you can see the special view that allow you to speak to see only this area with a specific height you're gonna face this problem always with the window located in the bathrooms anyway because they are higher than 1100 as a height anyway we're gonna talk that later when we design we study more detailed in the when we study more views actually in detail so now we've done a little bit of a door and windows uh, as a standard or unloaded family. Let's add, uh, let's, uh, and also we did the generic creation for the, any modification for the floor. We did the parapet. Now we flex the building over there enough. So let's do some columns here. And let's have a look of this nice uh, command we didn't study yet. So I'll make column, but before, I think I need to make an external walkway so you know I don't want to come here to sit in the middle of nothing so I'm gonna go quickly to a floor in the sketch mode this time I'm gonna need the line just to draw something not related to those walls just randomly just clicking without even knowing where I am or caring like this see now look if you select this see it's gonna give you the distance from the closest element which is now happily a coincident is the wall so i'm gonna make this a 1500 while still selected same thing here if you select this guy you're gonna make it bluish and give you that see that template dimension again make it 1500 same this poor guy here aha uh -huh. this is wrong so you can drag that to that face and make it 1500 and this guy again the last one again it's correct just 1500 and a good way to see how trim works so select this guy and this guy now if I hit finish I'm gonna make an exact slab sitting on the ground floor exactly Ooh, a problem all this is gonna be what it's gonna be a paved concrete I don't want that. I already have a floor here for that. I want this to be lower than this floor, the ground floor, and only that here as a strip here. So what are you going to do? In this case, it's a good idea to have a pick line just to depend on this line, this line, and again, this guy, this guy, and so on. So it doesn't the slab, the walkway actually, doesn't go under the slab or occupying the same place as the concrete slab for the floor is double check when you use this that they are close-ended like this and there is no gaps which is gonna might be a killing thing now this will 100 percent so when you create a closed loop that is solid another closed loop inside that means this is void anyway which is good now don't hit that yet the finish edit mode just make sure that the highest offset is less than by 100 as the the height so it isn't gonna be with the same level of that and that's what I want so we're gonna pick that go to 3dc that's exactly what I want just the water it shouldn't be same height so I don't want the water to get inside the home so that's the house is safe and I see that's the slab and this is the, the that is the external walker which is 100 mil less than that that's what I wanted exactly uh, so this threshold is gonna prevent the whole thing the water from getting inside that's the thing that I wanted which is a kind of cool and you see when you flip that up it isn't getting inside that's the concrete slab that's just a walkway you know you just can't you just can I know it's pretty thick you can select that guy and just make it there anything thinner uh, I don't know I don't want to use this but let's go 150 make more sense that's my walkway and that's how it works even if you want me to like uh, go here oops go here I think I have to select it first select this guy and then here and then isolate the element see that's what I meant it when I say closed loop outside and then another inside closed loop to make it avoid anyway so uh, that's all now the column as we said I'm gonna go to the ground floor 
again column I'm gonna pick a structural column and here this is a physical real columns that actually can be used later on to to load a calculation with the structure rivet structure this guy architectural column are just a shell just an external just an just a cladding it doesn't have anything anyway so I'm gonna pick structural column here and uh, see it's just an I section or I beam sorry just I'm gonna go here load and again just be careful first you have to make sure that you are in the US metric system that's first the second thing is you don't go to columns this time because they are columns here I mean architectural columns so you go down and be patient just the structural columns and go to concrete and just click not this one this one maybe yeah yeah I don't care about the dimension of size I'm just gonna zoom in and come here and put that in here okay I know a scary warning message and then you don't see it just okay take it easy ignore it uh-huh that's what happened so I'm gonna cancel this because the comma goes still on see this guy again when you selected the property pop up here and telling you that its height the top constant range is stick to the ground floor which I don't want while the basement again is minus the lower edge of it is minus 2500 scary kind of so let's fix this top level I want it to the first so hit apply gonna make it taller and the top offset 2500 is too much for me just make it minus 100 which is the level of this this paveway you know remember the walkway I mean sorry so it start up flush with this and then ending up here and again it's as you can see it's overlapping with the whole universe so attach click this lab and good as you can see but it's it's touching now it's holding the flap correctly and overlapping but see this ugly like it's going that way and that way it isn't aligned so again go to the ground floor try to move this the column but the problem you don't see again what's above so now again what you need is just to deselect so you can return to the floor the property of the ground floor plan and now just a little bit scroll you see the underlay let me see the first floor which is above you see now that's my walls actually and that's uh that's what we want so just hit the line select this guy and hit the line so i want this as a reference that to follow it this as a reference that to follow it and now i pushed my column to be exactly located based on something else above me now just hit none as the job finished just go back to 3d and your life gonna be very happy see so that's a basic thing that's how we did uh, a column here and we fix its location exactly it's all basically almost except for this and this all of that doesn't have any material no specification except again for the brick wall and this column and uh, we just did like a small building very basic simple building uh, I wish in the next lecture you stay tuned with me and I'm gonna show you much more complicated uh, geometries I'm gonna do a two-story buildings with uh, uh, also uh, stairs and railing and also with the uh, material based material based walls and material based this lab I wish that you find this lecture useful thank you and have a good day bye bye